Welcome to a special series of This Week in Canton City Schools, where we will focus on the mental health and wellness of our kids and families. I'm Jacqueline Power, the Broadcast Media Program Instructor here at the Timken Career Campus of McKinley High School and your host today. The Canton City School District continues to partner with the Child and Adolescent Behavioral Agency. This agency provides a myriad of resources to the Stark County community and most importantly to our students within the Canton City School District. Each month we will feature resources and strategies to help the mental well-being of our young people. On this episode, we are talking with Abby Van Aken, Development Coordinator for CNA, and Dan Mucci, Mission Advancement Director for CNA, and Bryrell Pinckney, McKinley High School student athlete and broadcast media senior. And we'll be discussing the upcoming events in May all around Mental Health Awareness Month. Sit tight, all of that starts right now. On today's episode, we have Abby Van Aken, Development Coordinator for CNA, and Dan Mucci, Mission Advancement Director for CNA. And in our second segment, we will have Bryrell Pinckney, McKinley High School student athlete and broadcast media senior, joining us. Dan, you've been our guest a couple of times. This is not new territory for you. Please remind our viewers a little bit about yourself and where you grew up, where you went to school, how'd you end up at CNA? <laughs> Great, thank you for having me back, Jackie. It's always a pleasure. So I grew up in Stark County, um, up the road in Plain Township. So a little bit of a rival for you guys. I went to Glen Oak High School. After we that- We won't hold it against you. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> After that, I went to Mount Union College. Now it's the University of Mount Union, of course. So I really stayed in Stark County. After that, uh, when I graduated from Mount Union, I went into journalism. So I was a writer for a while. Then I managed youth carriers who delivered newspapers. Then I actually managed a newspaper or two, uh, went into sales a little bit, and then wound up at CNA. So really, all of my background kind of pointed me in this direction, and it's really kind of combined all my skills into uh, working and promoting CNA. Yeah, being local, staying local, right. giving back locally to the community, so awesome. Yeah. So Abby, how about you? Please tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and where you grew up and what college you attended and how'd you end up at CNA? Absolutely, um, my name's Abby. Um, I'm from Akron, Summit County girl. I went to high school at Firestone, so there's no bad blood here. No, no, <laughs> right? no rivalry separate. across the table at this right. point. <laughs> I went to the University of Mount Union. I graduated in 2019. Afterwards, I pursued my graduate degree out in Connecticut. Um, in program development for nonprofit. So after graduating, um, my bachelor's was in psychology, my master's work was in program development. So um, development at a nonprofit offering mental health services was a great fit for me and I'm so happy to be with CNA. It sounds like a nice little transition. Mm -hmm. eased right into it and using all of the strengths of your skill set. So yeah. I'm sure CNA is like super excited that the two of you can team up together and, and work together. So the first event that we are going to be talking about is um, also our feature in next month's segment, which is Stark County Schools Mental Health Week. Tell our viewers the history of this event and give some insight on what will take place during the week. Yeah, so about five years ago, CNA, um, right after I just started actually, um, a colleague and I were talking and saying, what can we do for Mental Health uh, Awareness Month in May with our schools? And so we came up with the idea of Stark County Schools Mental Health Week. And so at that time we had eight partner school districts, which we still have in Canton City, has been an awesome partner of ours. So we did some morning announcements, we did some posters, it was very small scale, um, and it went over well, so the schools liked it. Some other school districts reached out to us and said, hey, we'd like to be a part of this initiative. And so over the years, it's changed and grown. Um, you know, you guys have been an excellent partner, choosing our student, one of our student mental health champions. Um, you help with our Unity video. Your kids are great with some peer-to-peer -peer messaging. And um, all around, it's incredible how all the school districts just kind of pull together around this initiative. So it's grown much bigger than we even anticipated. 
Over the course of time, of course, Stark Marr, our mental health and addiction recovery board has gotten behind it and so has all care. So one of the things we do with our elementary kids, and we're not gonna get into it too much this month because we wanna save it for next month. Sure. But the kids all get a bookmark. So about 20,000 elementary kids will get a bookmark that they can write a positive message on. They can erase that message and keep adding messages. So as they're reading at home over the summer, uh, into next fall, mm -hmm. whatever, they can constantly change that message if they choose to do so. This year, um, we've also partnered with ComQuest and Pathway Caring for Children. And one of the initiatives that came out of that was how can we include the teachers too? It wasn't that we were ignoring the teachers before, but coming out of the pandemic, so much of the focus was on the kids. Okay. So this year for principals, teachers, um, custodians, cooks, we created along with all care a self-care tip card so every teacher will get one of these if they scan the qr codes there'll be some mental health tips for you and just a way to make it really all inclusive for everybody within the school so that will touch about 4,000 teachers, custodians, bus drivers across the county. So all together, we will reach about 60,000 students, teachers, administrators, et cetera. I'm always excited about talking about those specific topics because we do participate mm -hmm. across the county. Um, all of the schools get together and mm -hmm. through your office, we're able to put together some cool messaging and cool opportunities. But we can talk a little more about yeah. that. The next show yeah, that we yeah. spend some time, I won't, I won't keep us on that topic. <laughs> um, so let's kind of go over to telling us about the history of the Stark County Roundup. Yeah. So, <laughs> Last year, we decided to do a Canton Roundup, and we got 15 uh, restaurants and businesses in downtown Canton to participate. The whole reason we did it was because of the pandemic. We knew less people were working downtown, less people were coming downtown. So we really wanted to work with our small businesses, our restaurants, right. to try to drive traffic back downtown. And so... Uh, what we learned over the course of time, and Abby's going to talk a little bit more about that, is some of our businesses were too close together. So if you went out to eat at one business and then walked in to the next business, like, are you going to keep giving over the course of uh, the whole month? Mm -hmm. So this year we're expanding it out in Stark County. So we're still very Canton-oriented. About half of our businesses will be in downtown Canton. Mm -hmm. And then we're reaching out to have a couple in Alliance, a couple in Louisville, one in Plain Township one in Maslin and a couple in Jackson. So again, as we expanded with Stark County Schools Mental Health Awareness Week, we're expanding this out so our message is reaching more people. So before, Abby, we talk maybe a little bit about some of the changes taking place, which Dan kind of mentioned some of them. Why do we do the Roundup? So. <laughs> no, it just seems like one of those things I know to kind of drive people downtown. And now that we're expanding it, kind of what is, I mean, what's the messaging and the hope for something like that? So with the messaging, all of our business owners have talked about mental health and how they do it with their employees. The Roundup is just a way for the Star County community to give back to CNA and make a contribution. So when we first started it, the initiative was we will drive traffic to your business and in return, you will try to get customers to round up their bill or make a donation and help CNA and youth mental health. And so, you know, if you go to the grocery store right now, um, the food bank is asking you to donate a dollar or donate two dollars or you know, if you go into Drug Mart or Ace or your favorite business you patronize, a lot of times they're asking you to round up your bill for their chosen cause. So we chose to partner with uh, where our agency is located throughout Stark County and get those establishments to, again, partner with us. And we feel like we're giving them something in return by promoting them on social media, giving the history of their business, providing a self-care tip, and in return then we get however much Stark County generates to us donates to us which again it's all about partnerships right. it's about relationships and um and growing something right. so the roundup is changing a little bit this year describe for our viewers the changes that are taking place like who's participating this year how is this event changing for the customer experience yeah like uh, dan said last year the roundup was strictly in canton we had 15 downtown canton restaurants and businesses this year we're expanding so we've got unhitched in Louisville that's participating bosco's um, pizza kitchen in i see that's my 
why I like that place. <laughs> um, we have Aonian Brewery and um, Mount Union Nutrition out in Alliance. Um, we just wanted to gather some more people in on this initiative, spread it out a little bit, um, and make it easier for people to give. Um, this year, instead of just having people round up their bill or drop some change in the jar, there's also other ways to donate. We'll be um, including Venmo QR codes on the tables. They'll be in the menu inserts, make it real easy and simple for people to pull out their phone, even though you shouldn't do it at the table. <laughs> Scan, give a couple or bucks, Or so I'm whatever. told by my parents. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> um, and do it that way and continue on with their meal. And that way the servers don't really need to think about it. The owners don't need to push it out too much. It's just there and available if people are willing and able to give which I feel like is a nice compromise so I know like you were saying mm -hmm. like every time I check out at a register whether it's even at the gas station I mm -hmm. think like they want you to give to something Christmas time I know every time I'm in an, um, a retail establishment round up for this round up for that mm -hmm. so why not round up for our community and exactly why we're here in Stark County. So the, on the business side of things and then obviously, you know, mental health being such a challenging um, obstacle really for all of us and if we can be in it together, mm -hmm. it seems like the perfect marriage. Yeah. So Abby, this year um, you are hosting. Before we go Oh to yeah, that, oh go ahead Dan, I'm Abby, sorry. do you want to mention the downtown Canton restaurants that, oh, yeah, that are participating? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 we kind of moved be, on to We kind of did. I guess I was thinking when then, she listed a couple of yeah. them and I just skimmed right over in my head. So yeah, Yes, please. The downtown businesses that will be working and partnering with you guys this year. In Canton, we're doing we're going back to Grapes in a Glass. Last year, Grapes in a Glass actually won the Canton Roundup. They um, raised the most funds for us last year, so they've got the nice big trophy set up. Um, Always about a good trophy. Uh huh. They're <laughs> defending their title. Um, we've also got Arcadia, Sparta Steakhouse, Fromage de Mund, um, Carpe Diem for our coffee drinkers, Conestoga, and Milestone, which is one of my favorites, <laughs> going out for a game night. Um, and like I said, Aonian Brewing out in Alliance, along with Mount Union Nutrition, um, Unhitched out in Louisville, and Bosco's Pizza Kitchen in Jackson. And um, Bubba's will be doing a dine to donate at some point oh. during the month, yeah. Um, but we're really happy to have all these people on board. Tons of community partners. Yeah, Carpe Diem is great. They're downtown, and she's wonderful. Yeah, like, she is. They, she's incredible. I don't get down there as often as I'd like to now, but there were times throughout the entire time I've worked here. You walk down, and she's like, okay, what can I get you? I've taken my seniors down there before, and we've done, and she's served 15, 20 kids coffee, and, like, she's just, she really is great. So a little plug for Carpe Diem, <laughs> and I'm a, I love coffee, so I can't help it. So now that we've wrapped up the roundup we can talk a little bit about uh, this year you're hosting your third annual uh, duck derby so tell us a little bit about that we are so <laughs> excited for our third duck derby this year it will be in person for the first time yeah. at eastwoods park in north canton um, June 10th from 11 to 1. So for $10, you can adopt one of these wonderful oh, ducks. And when fun. you adopt, don't forget to name your duck. We get a lot of creative names that come in, like mm. Splash or Swimmer, Quack Sparrow, Hugh Quackman. Mm. People get really creative, and it's I really love it. fun to see those <laughs> names come in. Um, we're going to have a food truck. We're going to have community partners out tabling. Um, first duck gets $500. Second place is $250. Um, third place is 100, and for the last guy down the finish line, they're going to get a free pizza party. So, um, $10 a duck, and we'll be selling through April. Um, they'll be up for adoption, and if any um, community businesses want to uh, support youth mental health, we'll accept sponsorships as well, and they can find that all on our website. Okay, so if I want to buy a duck, I go to the website. Mm, yes, ma'am. And, and as far as our community partners, same thing. They can mm -hmm. go there and maybe do a sponsorship mm -hmm. of a family of ducks yes. that can participate. And where is it happening again? Eastwoods Park in okay. North Canton. Yep. All right. And then, so, Dan, what's new this year with this particular event? It seems like every year you guys kind of yeah. add things, like, and this event is probably no different. So what yeah. are we adding? So, well, as Abby said, we're in person for one, and we're going right. to do a food truck. Uh, we're probably going to partner with our Stark County Youth Lead Prevention Team, which is a program of CNA. They've, I think they've been on your, our program before, yep. your program. And then also North Canton Schools is going to partner with us. So um, if your viewers aren't aware, uh, Claremont and Orchard Hill are kind of like halfway between the park. So they're going to adopt some ducks, sell some ducks in school, uh, do a couple fundraisers, and um, 
You know, really we're just looking for a lot of fun. Like, it's hard to do an event virtually and, and narrate ducks going down a stream. <laughs> and so uh, we're just really excited to be out in the community and do it live. And we will absolutely hope for some great weather. Yes. 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 So nice, sunny, warm day. June is so unpredictable these days. So we'll hope for warm weather and lots and lots of ducks to float through. <laughs> yes. And so how many, um, so I guess we can kind of, let's see, we've talked a little bit about the roundup. We talked a little bit about um, your duck derby, other events going on? Was there anything else that we wanted to cover as far as events? I think we're pretty good. Uh, as always, we're busy. We never yeah. rest. Um, but this will keep us busy through the end of May before we get into our huge fundraiser in September. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess since you guys are kind of that communications hub, who else works in your department? Tell me a little bit about the department before we go into the next segment. Yeah, we've got one other um, partner with us. Her name is April. She's a graphic designer. If anything needs to be made for an event, I send it over to her and because I'm not creative, I can't. <laughs> I'm like, this is what I want. This is what should be listed on it. Make it look pretty. And she yeah. does that and she goes above and beyond. Um, she works as well with Dan. She's our assistant and she does awesome work. So there's three of us all together in the apartment in the department. Yeah, I agree with the graphic design side of things. <laughs> like I can, I, there's a lot of my skill set and it's sometimes that tedious little mm -hmm. stuff. So it's always good to have that artsy brain at the table that, yes. can, that can help out with all sides of things. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> so, all right, after a quick break, we will have an added guest to the set and we'll discuss um, the new initiative, Athletes Strong for Mental Health, and we'll be right back. Me and my friends view mental health as a serious concern. Mental health can trigger things such as depression, anxiety, stress, etc. And we understand that if anyone is experiencing this, they should seek help immediately. They're able to connect with me or my friends to get the help they rightfully deserve. Along the sides of my friends and family, we practice self-care by spending quality time in person talking about how we're feeling and what's new in our lives. With all the pressures our young people face in general, you can imagine adding being a scholar athlete to the mix can create some added barriers to a young person's well-being and more specifically their mental well-being. We could use many examples of even Olympic athletes that have faced challenges in recent years in regards to balancing it all. Our young people are walking in those very footsteps and creating their own paths as students and as athletes. Joining us on set with Dan is Bryrell Pinkney, who is no stranger to this side of the camera as our student host of Bulldog Nation Sports and one of our hosts of our weekly announcements. So thank you, Bryrell, for joining us. But before we get into the student perspective, let's dive into the understanding of Athletes Strong for Mental Health Initiative. So Dan, let's take a little time to discuss the new initiative that CNA started this year, Athletes Strong for Mental Health, and tell us about the initiative and where the idea came from. So really the idea started last March when Ohio State's offensive lineman Harry Miller came out and talked about his struggles and how throughout his entire life he had the perfect persona out there if you mm -hmm. looked at him, but yet all along he was struggling with suicide ideation. And so it just spurred an idea in me and I talked to uh, Melissa Coltis, who used to be my boss at CNA, and said we should really try to develop something around athletes and their mental health. And we talked about it, and so we went out and talked to each of our partner school districts to see where the athletic departments were with this mm -hmm. uh, idea, like how they were addressing mental health. And all of them were on board, and a couple of them are like, so what kind of resources do you have? And we were like, well, we're in the process of developing them because we didn't know how each school was going to react to it. Mm -hmm. And so we partnered with Dr. Steve Grave, a Columbus-based sports psychologist. Unfortunately, there are not many or any sports psychologists in Stark County. And so uh, Dr. Grave is a Lake High School graduate. He played football at Lake. Uh, he did track. He also played for Ohio State's uh, 2002, I believe, national championship team. Mm -hmm. And then he went into psychology and actually was the sports psychologist for Ohio State for a while. And so he's really provided us some terrific insight into this. He's partnered with us on this initiative. And it's really just grown. Um, the schools have been really receptive to it. Some of them are a little bit further along than others, but um, 
as we're going to find out talking with Bryrell and a couple other people. Like it's just such an important topic, and Harry Re Miller really brought it to the forefront. And of course, Ryan Day uh, enabled him to express those feelings and was able to get him help, the help he needed. Yeah, and I feel like last year, didn't you have a piece from Ryan? Like We did have, yeah. so for mental health awareness. Uh, so it's obviously we, a cause right. near and dear to him. Mm -hmm. So if you recall, or maybe you don't recall, Ryan Day's uh, father committed suicide when he was eight or 10 years mm -hmm. old, but he never really talked about it or discussed it. So when Ryan was up in Stark County at Perry High School on a recruiting trip, uh, that's when Perry High School was going through their suicide contagion. And he walked in on a Wednesday and said, where is everybody? Like, nobody was in school. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the administrators explained what was going on in Perry. And he went back and talked to his wife and said, I need to tell my story. We need to start our foundation. Right. And then I need to make sure we can have mental health counselors available in our practice, not just for football, but for Every, every athlete at the Ohio State University, so. Which I feel like it takes almost like a, a big spokesperson and somebody to kind of come out of their comfort zone and say, I'm willing to be the face of something that is a very difficult topic. So, and I think for our young people, um, I've watched 18 years <laughs> worth of athletes come through my programs and you'll see different pockets of time where it's almost as if their personalities dramatically change. And I know that it's this influx of pressure from whatever the source might be and you feel that added pressure as an athlete, as a student athlete to balance it all. I think that's true. And that was one of the things we talked about this. So this can be preventative mm -hmm. as we know. And I think we've talked about before there's a shortage of therapists for the mental health field, not just in Stark County, not just in Ohio, but across the country. Right. And so we look at this as a preventative program that if a coach or an athletic director can recognize that something's not right with one of their athletes, we're not asking them to be their counselor. We're just asking them, hey, we think you should go see a school counselor or a school-based provider, mm -hmm. uh, just talk to them. And a lot of times what we're finding is our school-based providers can talk them through their anxiety or stress right. issue in like a 20 minute or one session and we don't have to open them up as a client, but we can give them enough tools to put in their toolbox to solve their problem. And really what we also realize, I'm sure Breyrell will talk about it, especially here at McKinley, no offense, when you're playing in front of 10,000 fans <laughs> at a football stadium, yeah. your anxiety and stress is going up more than the kid who is just coming to school, which there's nothing wrong with that, and then right. going home and doing their homework. But yeah. the pressure and stress of being in front of 50 people, let alone 10,000 people or 20,000 people at the McKinley Maslin game has to just. They play on just, such a large right. stage and all sports are like that right. across the board for McKinley because it is such a well-known school mm -hmm. for sports that I feel like they do um, have that stage that's quite different right. than some of even the other schools in the Federal mm -hmm. League right. in comparison because we are such a big school. So let's talk before we pick up Bryrell's feedback mm -hmm. on any of that let's do what are some of the topics you guys have covered kind of as a part of that program yeah so first we just started real basic with what is mental health and what mm -hmm. should coaches be looking for and now we've moved into what happens if you get a season in ending injury so if you're a senior you've worked your whole life to be the starting right. quarterback or whatever you right. get hurt and your season's gone what like how do we help that kid not only get through the season but also through his or her senior season and then uh, we've looked at how should coaches and athletes be communicating with each other and then uh, what recently just came out is how do you deal with a two-sport athlete but the interesting thing Steve has done for us is he breaks the component down for just a segment on coaches a separate segment for athletes and then a separate segment for parents. So obviously you and I are parents, we have kids. Um, when they come home from school, you don't know what you're gonna get, especially if they're an athlete. Right. So it's tips for parents, like how do you communicate what happened with your kid that day, not only at school, but on the athletic field? Mm -hmm. Or how do you start to recognize signs might not be right? Like, do they leave the dinner table early? Do they not do their chores? Like, mm -hmm. what's going on that you can also be the advocate for your student to perhaps mm -hmm. see somebody if they need it or just be that trusted adult that everybody needs? 
And it sounds, it is a weighty. Anytime we're talking about <laughs> things that revolve around mental health, mm -hmm. it's such a weighty topic. So what kind of feedback have you received so far based on, I know it's a short, it's <laughs> such a short amount of time to right. kind of look back on, but feedback so far. So all of our schools are actually using the materials, but they're all using it in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, down at Sandy Valley, they did have a student who was a senior who got hurt, and so they were able to use those materials with the coach, the athlete, and the parent to all help them navigate and keep this uh, student athlete involved with the football team. Um, Marlington High School is probably using it the best from the feedback I've gotten, not that Canton City's not using it or anybody else. Marlington's actually calling all their athletes together in the auditorium before a season starts, and they're actually playing a video for them, mm -hmm. and then they're breaking it out into small discussion groups. Now, Marlington is a smaller school, probably has more two-sport athletes than a lot of other schools. I'm not saying McKinley doesn't have their fair share, but there's a smaller pool of kids to right. pull from. And one of the things that impressed me the most about Marlington is they had a golfer who was destined for state. Like, everybody believed she was, you know, going to represent them at state. And in the regional match before she got to state, she took a 10 on one hole. Like, she just kept going oh, back no. and forth. She's like, I visualized the putt going in. I did everything I was supposed to. And she was obviously crushed. Yeah. And they had those discussions, and she said... I feel like I let the whole team down. And they're like, but girl. we're not talking about the team. Like, what yeah. about you individually? Yeah. Like, are you okay? Can we mm -hmm. help you? So Marlington's kind of been at the forefront from what I've heard of having these discussions with their kids and really using the materials. Um, but we're going to check back at the end of the school year and just see how all the schools are utilizing mm -hmm. them. But all the schools are also giving us tips on topics all the time. So... Um, Again, as we move forward with this, I think it'll continue to grow. Yeah, Marlington's a pretty small school, so being a graduate right. of Carrollton, <laughs> we've been in what was right. the NBC mm -hmm. and now the EBC together my entire yeah. life. And they are, they are a pretty small school. So I think in a small school, you do have more options when you're in a massive school like a McKinley, like a Maslin. They're big schools that you know, just require something a little different. And I feel like with the evidence in a Marlington, those can be plans that can be um, kind of utilized and spread into the other schools mm -hmm. to say, hey, this kind of works on a small scale. Realize you've got, and we right. do have several of my kids are multi-sport athletes and they participate in multiple things, even being a mm -hmm. big school like that, but you're exactly right. Like a bigger school, you might just do your football thing or your basketball right. thing or track or softball or whatever it might be, and that's it, right. where those smaller schools, you have to fill a team up. So, um, But it sounds <laughs> right. like Marlington could really be a nice example to mm -hmm. utilize in moving forward in some of yeah. our bigger districts. Yeah, and of course, with McKinley, Mike Schott came from Alliance, yes. came in this year. He had to learn a whole new system. I know he's utilizing the material. Uh, him and I have been friends since we were in college together. But it just takes him a while to get used to the culture here and how he can best learning the job. Yeah, utilize him, those yep, materials. And, and learning his, or getting to know his coaches, mm -hmm. getting to know his kids, like right. working around. Um, because, yeah, he seems like an incredible individual that would absolutely be able to jump in with both right. feet and and yeah. want this to be a part of the culture of McKinley High School for sure. So so why now and why does this focus in this particular area? I know we talked a little bit about like the Ohio State reference piece, but why now? Why now? We're still coming out of the pandemic and right. we'd like to not keep mentioning that word, but anxiety is just up everywhere. Right. And really, um, you know, it's all around us. Kevin Love was a huge example. He's mm -hmm. no longer with the Cavs. He's moved on to Miami. Um, Simone Biles, Michael right. Phelps. You can just go down the line of well-known athletes who have had issues and have come forward. So again, I think because we have a shortage of mental health therapists, um, this is a way, it's a prevention tool. So again, um, you can't coach like you coached in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Like I'm sure Briar will tell, kids don't respond to that. Before, if a coach yelled at you, um, that's just the way it was. It's my way or the highway. <laughs> but in today's world, that's not how these kids are brought up. That's not how they want to focus. They want coaches that care about them 
well, I'm not going to speak for you, but <laughs> in most cases, you want a coach that's going to care about you personally as well as athletically uh, mm -hmm. form that relationship. And so um, now just felt like the right time with everything that was going on that um, if we can get coaches again to recognize smaller issues, we can solve the smaller issues before we become more Harry Millers in the world. Yeah. Yeah. which fortunately he has turned everything around and is a huge advocate for mental health and has done really well. But Well, and a lot of the names that you mentioned as well, um, as far as those that are in the limelight that are those elite mm -hmm. athletes, that it took a lot for them to step aside from their sport or even admit that there was something that they were struggling with. And now there's really been a kind of shift and rallying around them and saying this is something we absolutely have to pay attention to. So for our young people here, what do you hope they're walking away with knowing or maybe doing a little differently than prior to starting the initiative? Yeah, so hopefully they're just having more consonant recognition of symptoms and they're not afraid to go up and talk to their coaches and their coaches are really establishing good relationships. And I think that's the key at Ohio State was Harry Miller went to Ryan Day and knew that Ryan was going to be very supportive. So hopefully, um, you know, also parents. I mean, as a parent myself of a three sport athlete who's now an athlete in college, like there are some things you think you're paying attention to, but maybe you're not. And mm -hmm. Uh, teenagers all have hormones running through them and uh, different stresses and anxieties and everything else. Right. So really just raising the awareness of uh, coaches, athletes, and the parents to like, hey, let's rally around and support the kid. And I know before we, we jump into Braille, I just want to make another point too. We are going to take a lot of this material and translate it for the performing arts kids because again they're in front of 500 800 people doing mm -hmm. their choir show their band show their uh, play or musical and so again they're probably going through some of the same stresses and anxiety but a lot of that wording and phrasing needs to be translated to fit um, the performing arts so that's uh, the next step in this initiative and taking it a little bit further so for coaches I mean what what kinds of things do you hope they're talking to their student athlete about? So if there was a tip that you could give any of the coaches watching it, what would you tell them? Really what Dr. Grave always says is communicate and mental health check-ins. So hopefully, um, you know, if you have a football team, did you play football very well? No, I ran track. I have to play football freshman year. Okay. But even a track team has 50, 60 athletes, and one head coach cannot check in with 60 right. kids. But hopefully he is breaking that down to his assistant, and every coach has 10 kids. And just do a mental health check every week. Mm -hmm. Like, is everything okay with school? Is everything okay at home? Um, if they know they have a girlfriend or a significant other, um, you know, is everything okay there? And just do those checks so that if an athlete is having something going on, mm -hmm. they will then, during that mental health check-in with their coach, say, you know what, to th this week wasn't a great week. Like, I didn't do well on my homework. Uh, something's not right at home. Mm -hmm. And they can either talk that through or then the coach can say, you know what, I think we can solve this pretty easily, but let's go talk to XYZ in the mm -hmm. counseling department. And so the real takeaway is coaches communicating with the kids and doing those mental health check-ins once a week. So we've talked a lot about Bri Rowe kind of beside <laughs> him. So here to give us that student athletic um, perspective is Bri Rowe Pinckney. He is um, a part of our broadcast media class and here to kind of tell us a little bit about from your perspective. So we're going to start with kind of who you are, what titles do you hold, and what should we know about you before we get into the real questions? What do you think? Um, my name is Bri Rowe Pinckney. As she said, I'm a student, broadcast media student. I'm the president of the senior class. I hold a, I hold a lot of titles. I don't I want to just name. <laughs> uh, president of our student section, talking about sports, and I'm the captain of a track team. Um, 
I know your accolades go yeah, on and on and on. Like, like we would just need probably like a half hour. <laughs> so when we talk about students and pressure and like feeling that, like you can absolutely, I'm sure, feel that from all yeah. angles because you hold so many different roles within your day to day. Mm -hmm. So um, you are one of our two Canton City um, Schools mental health champions for the 2023 school year, representing our district countywide during Mental Health Month. From an athletic perspective, do your coaches talk to you about mental health from an athletic side of things? What are they saying? What about maybe a mentor in that athletic setting? Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I would say they do, mainly, uh, which is a big part, our head coach. He's really big on that. He actually reached out to me yesterday because he's seen in practice that my mood swings are off because I just recently got hurt from my hamstring. So he's seen I was very irritated. Um, he could tell something's wrong, so he messaged me uh, yesterday night, and he just checked up on me. He said something was off, just seeing if everything was good, and I got to kind of got to tell him like, yeah, I was just irritated, frustrated. Um, mentor side of things, I also have another coach, Coach Tellis. Um, he's at Crenshaw right now, but he still texts me, checks up on me. Uh, he sees what I need to do, how I need to get better. And he's always asking, am I okay? And you know, as a student athlete you want a coach like that that is willing to go out of his way and get in contact with you to make sure that you're okay. And that's where that trust comes from, to be able to talk to them. I feel like I hear you saying that like that piece of that caring piece. That yeah. They genuinely care that you are their athlete yeah. and that your mental health and well-being is equally as important as right. to how you perform on the field. Right. So how do you think your teammates you and your teammates, I should say, mm -hmm. view mental health overall. Uh, I feel like, and well, f not to brush any other sport, but track, it is a very huge thing for mental health because it's basically an exercise sport. You run, you run, you run. Like, if your mental isn't there, you can't compete, you know? You have to want to be able to push yourself and push further, but you can't do that if everything else around you is, you know, still discombobulated. So I feel like we as athletes we have to we have to balance those things and on the track side of things we need not only coaches but other our teammates as well to you know like check up on us you know how are you i mean it's not i wouldn't say it's 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 not their role to do that it's not their place but to know that you have teammates who care about everyone you know as a team like we are um, it just builds a family and that just carries on and you just want that to carry on through the generations after I graduate and whoever's the next captain, they do the same, you know, just push that on to you, to your teammates and let them know that you care so then they have a reason to care about the next teammate. And I think you kind of already answered where I was going, like why the topic is important to kind of discuss amongst your peers. So mm -hmm. if you are coaching up that next captain that's going to yeah. be coming in after you, what are you telling them specifically maybe around what we just talked about? What mm -hmm. are you talking to them about to get them to be that next leader and, and why it's so important to talk to your peers about this? Um, I'm mainly focusing on, well, I don't want to say his name because... No, 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 that's okay. No, right. you don't have to tell me who. I'm okay. just saying, like, in general, whoever that person might be, what could you be saying to that person? Just focus on your teammates, mm -hmm. but don't, don't, don't focus on your teammates too much that you lose yourself. So you want to you want to balance that like you want to make sure that you're okay so that they're okay you know you don't want to focus too much on them and then you just lose track of yourself so i just say balance is the key thing you know balance that life but don't don't just think all about sports think about your education think about your personal life you have a lot of things to think about outside of just sports so i don't want you to think that sports is just your life you have to be here I mean, you, of course you have to be there, you want to try to be there, but you don't have to be there for everyone. It's okay to, you know, miss some days and not be there for that next person because everybody knows who you are. Everybody's going to hold you accountable for your position. Don't, don't, think, don't ever think it's too much because that's when you get lost. So just, just try to balance those things, talk to your teammates, make sure they feel whole so that, you know, you know you have a team that can come to you for anything. So outside of sports, their personal life, talk to you about anything. 
but just make sure that someone's there for you also. And you know that you're a really good listener. I already know that about you. <laughs> when I when I <laughs> get phone calls, hey, I need Bray Roll to come over here and do this thing or that thing, like he definitely does fill in that. And if you can impart that on the next group of young people, <laughs> that will be an incredible feat for you, that's I'm sure. So did I miss anything that you were kind of thinking when it, in regards to mental health or any messages that you wanted um, to get across that maybe I didn't ask? Um. I know we talked about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would just say no. Just don't, just don't lose track of yourself. Just make sure that you're, you can be there for yourself as well. Not, you can't be everything to everyone. Exactly. <laughs> and I feel like when I was first, like last year, when I was first picking up all those positions, that's probably what I did, and it was a lot of stress. But you know. How'd you work through it? So, I mean, we are, we really are talking mm -hmm. about like how mm -hmm. young people take on stressful situations. And yeah. maybe what were some of the things that you personally were able to so, do as far as coping skills or things that you were able to impart so that you could balance so things? Mine was relatively easy just because when I run it, it relieves stress. Okay, so, so running. So that's <laughs> a coping mechanism for you is yeah. running. I love it, yes. So when track practice hit, you know, that's when I just took it all out or we have a meet coming up, just take it all out, PR, do my best. After that, I'm just, everything's gone on the track. Just leave it all on the track. So yours is definitely physical activity. Okay, well, I hear that a lot. Like runners in right. particular yeah. will say that that is one of the their best coping mechanisms is put some earbuds in and take a good run. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm running, y'all should be running too because stop's chasing me. <laughs> but I can completely understand um, that that kind of thing because I do mm -hmm. like genuinely, like whether it's working out or something like that where you're giving your physical exertion, sometimes it allows then kind of the mind to calm down a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can talk reason to yourself all by yourself because in that moment it is really just about you. Mm -hmm. So any type of physical fitness I feel like is one of those markers that yeah, totally definitely. helps. Yeah, it does. So as always, Bray Rowe, you do a fantastic job. Thank I you. think that you will, this next transition for you will be a smooth sail for you. And hopefully Thank you'll you. be able to come back and give lots of advice mm -hmm. to the high schoolers that kind of come through. So undoubtedly, we Thank all you. balance a lot um, these days and our student athletes mm -hmm. definitely have their fair share of obstacles so thank you Bri Rell, for sharing your perspective with us today no i really really appreciate that um, for coming on this side of the camera in a very very different way mm -hmm. so um in wrapping up today where can our viewers find information about your events anything we've talked about what's taking place in may so they can go to our website childandadolescent.org and then if you have any questions, you can call 330-433-6075. Same number as always. So thank <laughs> you for all that information and all the resources. Again, thanks, Brayrell, so much cool. for being here and for you and Abby both for being here today. So for more information on this topic and so much more, you can visit the CNA website, like we said, www.childandadolescent.org. Or you can call the CNA office at 330-433-6075. Thank you to Dan Mucci, as always, and your new title of Director or Marketing Mission Advancement Director. Director. I okay. can't get you. All right. <laughs> of Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health for helping to coordinate this episode and future episodes in this partnership. As for TV11 staff, we will continue to bring you an inside look at the district each week during the regular school year, in addition to these series of shows on mental health and wellness. So if you're a staff member and would like to have a feature story on our program, please email me at power underscore J at ccsdistrict.org and our station administrator, Bill Widener at widener underscore b at ccsdistrict.org. Love to have you into the studio to showcase the valuable experiences our kids have here at the Canton City School District and the supports we have in place to educate the whole child. Please visit our website at ccstv11.com where you can get information on all of our shows and watch us on your favorite device. We will see you next time. My friends and I don't make assumptions to the circumstances but offer reinsurance by letting others know they are not alone and we're here to help. Me and my friends would normally just have a conversation with that person that is down to get them up. Sometimes a simple conversation goes a long way. Just listening and giving them a response means a lot. We also offer them advice if needed to ensure that they have a better tomorrow.